make sure everything's working. So if you're watching this in the replay, probably skip ahead five minutes or so. Um, just trying to get myself up on my iPad so I can actually see if I've got comments. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Sammy. Oh, thank you so much. Hi, Shauna. Oh, Canberra. Awesome. That's where my sister is. Hope that iPad's not going to be too distracting there. Move this down a little bit further so you don't see my tummy because no one needs to see that. <laughs> I hope you get a million. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. Means I could stop working, that'd be lovely. Hi from New Zealand. Oh, goodness, we're from all over. Not sure how many people from the US or the UK we're going to get because I chose a really convenient time for them in the middle of the night. Thank you. Well, hopefully you'll have your own beautiful page as well. So are you all planning to um, create along with me? Hopefully. Move this out of the way so you don't see my pink cord. Hello, San Francisco woohoo, and Canada. Goodness me. People from all over. Hi, Janine. Okay, what do you need? Awesome, fantastic. Uh, <clears throat> I did do a supplies video, but I'm very quickly going to go through in about two minutes' time. I'll just get people time to pop in here and show you just some of the supplies ready to go. Sunny Michigan, wow. Well, it's beautiful here at the moment. So um, the sun's actually shining this weekend. We, um, we've had our first week of summer and uh, <laughs> it was like um, very early spring. It was a bit cold and wet and windy, um, which, you know, usually isn't a problem except our spring has been like summer. So it was like going backwards. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, so you're going into winter. You're in winter already, aren't you? <laughs> it would be lovely to be in the same space and same time as uh, as Megan. Yes. Hi, Wendy. I'm feeling good today. How are you feeling, guys? I'm very excited about this. I'm so glad you can come and play along with me. I was actually supposed to be doing an in-person class today, but that got cancelled um, because the, the owner of the shop wasn't feeling great. So... Um, I figured, well, I've already allocated this time to classes, so why not let everyone have a class today just for something fun? And um, as it's been such a year, I figured everyone might appreciate it, so. <laughs> yep, extra gift, uh, Christmas gift, gift to you. Awesome. Right, so someone a little while back did ask me about supplies for today. So supplies we will need for today are paints, obviously. Um, I've got my Dina Wakely paints sitting next to me. Um, they're probably what I'm going to use in the background because I've got them sitting next to me. But basically, if you've got acrylic paints, we're going to use acrylic paints in the back. Excuse me, in the background. Um, depending on what journal you're using. Um, you probably might need to gesso your surface, so we'll do that first. Um, if you don't have gesso, um, white paint will do. If you're using the Dilutions journal like this one, because it's so smooth, um, you probably don't actually need to gesso. I didn't gesso the original one. 
Um, but for example, if you're using the Dina Wakely one, because um, the, the cotton rag paper's got a bit of texture to it, uh, the scrapey technique that we're going to be using on it isn't going to work as successfully. Like it's, it still works, but um, if you've got a layer of gesso on it, it'll work better. So um, we'll gesso that in a second. Um, the other things that you will need, um, we're going to scrape our paint on today. I've just got one of these scrapey things. If you've got some thick plastic, that will work, or some cardboard, or um, a squeegee, a thick piece of cardboard. I use, um, you know when I use my quote chips um, on my pages, I keep the bits of that and use those bits as scrapers. So whatever you've got lying around that you can use that. Um, we will need one or two stencils. I've just used really simple ones. Um, I've got both Dina Wakely ones, surprise, surprise. So I've just got a dotty one and I have got the new Flourish one. Um, we are going to be doing some painting of the figures. I've, because I want to shade them with colour pencil, I've actually used the Paper Artsy paints. These are a really matte finish, so you can um, put um, colour pencil over the top. It's not necessary, so if you don't have this, a normal acrylic paint will work fine. Um, you just may not be able to put the colour pencil over the top, but you could maybe shade with some more paint over the top or um, scribble sticks, something like that. Um, some mic making stamps or if you've got some bubble wrap around I'm going to use that a little bit of collage paper I've just got a piece of text or some music paper um, if you have the Tim Holtz wings or wings of some sort um, if you want to make your figures into angels you can use that um, but um, he's got those wing ones you can use those you don't need to do wings at all so it's it's totally up to you if you've got some extra cardboard that would be handy as well just trying to think what else you need oh um if you've got neon paints um if you've got the dilutions ones they'll be fine um if you're in australia the mont mite ones any neon paints will work um so i've just got the um, Amsterdam ones are my favourites. A dark neutral, again this is one of my favourites, this is um, Amsterdam Payne's Grey. Um, you know, you could use Night from Dina Wakely if you wanted to. Basically, if, if, if you've only got black, use black, but we're, we're, we're trying to avoid black because we want it to be not really super dark. The other thing that I'm going to be using on this page, if I can find it, is some acrylic ink. I've got some white and somewhere in my mess I have got some gold that I will be probably flicking around as well. And I've got a fan brush because I use a fan brush to do blobby bits of paint. Um, and a one and a half an inch black brush. Um, just to paint some stripes, but again, any paintbrush will work. Those are just the two I've got here. That's pre. Oh, and a, um, paint pens. So I've got a white paint pen. Um, if you've got a paint pen of some sort, if you don't have paint pen, use paint. So it's all good. And blah blah. I keep saying it's the end. It's not. Um, those are the colours of. I've got some Prima pencils um, to do my shading. For each of the colours I'm going to use, I've got um, a light, medium and dark. So I've got those in greens, blues and reds. I've got some face colours and I've got my black Stabilo oil pencil. So um, we will be using those at some stage today. Thank you so much everyone for your, your lovely comments. Um, yes, Debbie, lovely to see you. Um, and yeah, hang around. Feel free in um, when you come back and do the replay to leave comments um, and I will answer them for you if you're not sure about what's going on. So who's who's ready to begin? Are we all ready? <laughs> Good morning Margarita. Oh. 
So this is, um, I suppose the reason I'm doing this is um, to say thank you to you all. Um, during this year, being as crazy as it is. So I'm just going to gesso around my page quickly so you can gesso while I'm yapping on to you. Um, it's going to be a really thin layer of gesso. You can scrape it on if you want. I'm just going to use a brush because I've got a brush sitting next to me. Um, this is just a bit of a way to say thank you to those people who have, uh, to all of you, because this year we have cracked... Um, 12,000, which is just ridiculous, people on my YouTube channel. So thank you so, so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel. It's been an absolute pleasure to create videos for you. It's um, it's a bright spot sometimes um, in some difficult weeks that I can I can get by and do that. I, I really enjoy it. Um, and during COVID... And because I'm a, a school teacher anyway, um, we were obviously having to teach online uh, and I was having to do more lives and so on. So I figured, well, if I can do that for my classroom, I can probably do that for my used to be face to face classes. So I um, have started teaching classes online. So for those people who are maybe new to my channel or have popped in from different places and don't know very much about it. Um, on my most of my recent videos, if you have a look in the description box, you'll see a link to all my online classes. I think I've got six there at the moment, which we have lots of fun with. Um, so you can get that. And those people watching replays, I'll put the link to my online classes in the description box. So you can have a look at those too. We have fun, don't we, Sammy? So yes, they're um, a bit like my channel. Uh, <laughs> they're um, eclectic. There's an eclectic mix. So we've got a junk journal one. We've got painting faces, painting an art journal cover. There's doing the whimsical dolls. Um, collage magazine collage the hidden secrets one which is sort of about journaling emotions there's one more and i can't remember what it is maybe that's all of them so six at the moment there will hopefully be more next year um i just need to have a think about it and and how i'm going to fit it all in because you know life's pretty busy so, so hopefully we'll just add a page Again, really, really um, thin gesso. It doesn't need to be very thick at all. Thank you, lovely ladies. We have fun in class. I love teaching the classes. That's what I'm so excited to do today. Um, and, hi. Oh, we've got lots of people from Canada in tonight, today. Um, as someone mentioned in the, in the classes, I, I do tend to get carried away somewhat. So, because I love talking to you all. We, we have the, the three-hour class, but I usually hop on and do two or three other lives and um, add in extra files and so on. So you've got a fair amount of resources that you can go back and look at. And the great thing is, unlike a face-to-face -face class, you've got the, um, the record of it. You can go back and look at it as many times as you want. And you are very, very welcome, Libby. So um, that's what I wanted to do today. I wanted you all to have an experience of what it is kind of like in my classes as well. So you get a bit of a, a taster of what you get. You don't get the uh, lovely um, little classroom as well where you can post your stuff, but I'll give you some links to that as well. Hello, Geraldine from Ireland. Where from Ireland are you located? All my family live in Donegal. We were supposed to be back there this year. Um, but, uh, funny enough, things happened in the world. <laughs> so we missed out. We were going back in June to spend a month with all our family, um, to, um, introduce our kids to them and, uh, didn't quite get there. Okay. Hopefully you have, oh, you're from Galway. Lovely. Yes. I do have a bit of a soft spot from Donegal and I grew up in Derry in Northern Ireland. So, um. We moved out here when I was 10. 
Okay, we're going to start off doing our background. So one of the reasons I chose this class is I know not everyone's a big holiday person. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's an Irish accent mixed with an Australian accent and um, it's hilarious because obviously I'm a school teacher and teach kids reading and sometimes when they read words I go, oops, yep, that, that's a bit Irish coming out there. <laughs> You're new, so wishing to learn lots. Well, you will hopefully learn lots and lots today, Ada. So, um, the reason I chose this page is because the background is really, really versatile for so many different things. Um, obviously, we're doing it in a night journal, but you could do this if you're a scrapbooker. You could do this um, on a scrapbook page. You can do this and cut it up into smaller card fronts. This makes a great background for card fronts. It's brilliant technique for just doing a really great background and then using on your die cuts as well. So, you know, just because you see something that I demonstrate into a night journal, don't think that you can't use it in other ways, shapes or forms. So backgrounds in particular are really, really useful. Oh, yes, Dairy Girls. Oh, my, oh my goodness. It's my favourite show. Um, and where they film is used to be where I um, near where I lived, so uh, it's quite funny. <laughs> so I'm just starting off on my page, putting a little bit of paint. Um, I've actually probably put out more than I need, so I'm just scraping on, and I'm going to use my scraper to do this. So as I said before, um, a piece of thicker plastic, piece of cardboard, a gift card, whatever you've got will work. Um, if you want to use a brush, use a brush. It really doesn't matter. I just like the um, the technique of, of scraping it. And all we're going to do is just scrape, scrape, scrape in any direction we want until there's no paint left. Now we're going to be doing lots and lots of overlapping colours. This is going to look really, really messy. So particularly those people who are new, don't panic. It's supposed to look messy. Okay. So you can see I've got little bits of paint here and there. I don't care. Okay. And basically your paint should pretty much be um, dry to the touch once you finish scraping it out. If it's not, just give it a quick blast of your heat gun. But it really should be that thin that it really doesn't matter. So again, I'm going in with a different colour. Now, um, I love rainbow colours. If you have not worked that out from my channel. <laughs> um, and I um, love just mixing my colours. If you wanted to do, you know, all cool colours or warm colours, that's fine. I am just going to mix everything up on my page. So. I'm not really thinking about what colours I am picking up, I'm just grabbing some. So the reason this works is because the layers that I'm putting on are dry. So um, I have a mix to purpley, well it's kind of purple because it's overlapped, but the colour underneath is actually dry so I can still see the blue sitting on top. Um, if I was trying to do this wet and wet, that's when you start getting muddy colours. So it's really important and that's one of the reasons why we were doing the scraping is to make sure we're getting really, really thin layers that dry really, really fast. I can't believe 64 of you are coming to spend your afternoon with me. Thank you so much. Okay, so again, going for a weird, wacky and ridiculous. Um, and as I said before, it really doesn't matter what acrylic paint you're using, you know, it's all going to work the same. I actually probably put a bit more paint out there, Neve. It's better to put out less paint than um, too much. Oops. And if you find that one of your favourite colours has disappeared because you've overlapped other colours over the top, we can always add more at the end. Okay, but this is all about sort of overlapping and scraping over the top. Ten 
fifteen on, in Florida. Yeah, I got, I got confused. Like I know you've got quite a number of time zones in America, but someone said I'm sure they said they're in, they couldn't have possibly have been in Florida, but they were saying it was about seven o'clock um, where they were. So um, in in the US. Um, easier in Australia because we've only got three time zones. That's, oh, that's West Coast, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's one of the other reasons I thought I'd do um, this as a class. So I'm actually doing it in real time for you because just so you don't have to sit there for hours on end watching my videos and so I don't have to talk for, you know, an hour and a half when I'm doing videos. Um, it's much easier for me to speed them up. Five different times as well. Yeah. Hard enough teaching kids at school about three different time zones. <laughs> so you'll notice when you start overlapping... Um, when you've got a few layers of paint on, um, it stays wetter a little bit longer. That's because the um, layers of paint underneath have obviously sealed it, so the, the paint's sitting on top. Um, if you don't want to get paint on your other pages, you could put a piece of paper there or just wipe it off. That's it. No. Uh, I do explain this in my my face-to-face um, -face classes too. I, I do tend to work quickly anyway. And for me, that's just the speed I work. And I know for some people, they like to work a lot slower. I just, I like to walk out at the end of my time to have um, a completed page. But um, I also find by working quickly, I don't spend lots of time going, have I chosen the right colour? Is that in the right place? Um, which for me, I find helpful. Um, I know for some other people, they find that stressful. So work at your own speed. And the good thing about this is that it is going to be um, recorded. So, you know, if you find it's going a little bit too fast for you and you want to take a little bit more time, that's fine. Um, you can come back and stop and start and go at your own, your own speed. So you notice I'm going in different directions as I'm scraping my paint. Now as I'm getting sort of more of my page filled up, I'm sort of picking up any extra paint I've got and sort of filling in gaps as well. Now we're going to be putting lots of stuff over the top of this and as I said before it's going to look messy, it's supposed to, it's, it's all good. Night Tony, have a good sleep and if you've got any questions just leave them in the comments and I will have a look after we're finished. Wow, six time zones in Canada, goodness. I know what you mean about it being a hectic week. We are in the middle of uh, school in Australia is about to, it has wrapped up in some places and is about to wrap up next week for us. So it's um end of year concert time and school report time and you know, all, all the crazy times so it's, uh, it's a bit nuts at the moment. I was um, at school late last night because we had our presentation evening for our kids. So they did a good job. There's always that moment teachers 
on here will understand where you, you see you send your kids up on stage to perform something you've practiced thousands of times you just sit there going knowing you have no control over what's about to happen <laughs> and you just hope it goes well <laughs> okay I think I've got enough on there at this stage I'm just gonna make sure everything is dry So the thing I love about this technique is you can layer your paints. Um, so I can put a yellow over a pink and I've still got yellow. Um, I've got the green, I've got a red and so on. So it's just a really great way to have lots of colour on your page at once. We are going to calm it down though. So don't panic too much if you think, oh, there's too much there. And um, for those of you who are new um, and who haven't been following my channel for a little, uh, have only just started following my channel, you would probably realise I don't do white space very well. I'm just going to clean up this page. Um, I, I like lots of colour, so. Oops. How are we going with our scraping of paint? Those people who are following along, let me know. And then I'll go into the next bit. Excellent, Pauline. I can't wait to see the finished result. Great. Um, the only other thing I am going to do, I did just say um, I don't do white space. Um, I am actually going to add in some white, and this is going to help with the next layer we're going to put on. So I'm not pressing down as much. I'm probably keeping this a little bit more, the white just a little bit more solid, a little bit more opaque on the page. I'm glad people are embracing their inner messy. Hi Pamela. So once you've got your white on, and again, if you've got white paint, white gesso, it really doesn't matter. You only want a little bit, and it's just gonna break up the page. Um, but it's also going to help us create a little bit of magic in a second. So even just with that, even though it's really messy, I, I can imagine you know, if you did some die cutting out of this, um, papers like this, it would look amazing. What I forgot to say at the very beginning is, um, I tend to go to the, the nth degree. I sort of add everything to my page just to sort of show you what it looks like. Um, if you decide you want to stop at any stage, please do. Um, I don't expect you to have a carbon copy of what I've got on the page. Um, that's part of the thing with um, mixed media. You're never going to get it exactly the same as someone else. So um, I want to see your creativity. I want to see what you come up with. Um, before I actually do my next little bit, I am going to do a little bit of stenciling in white. Okay, so you can see I've got lots of sort of separate bits of colour. When I'm stencing, again, I don't really tend to think about it too much. But I do kind of put my stenciling um, over joins, I suppose, to help blend things together. So, for example, over this join here, I'm probably going to do some stenciling, probably through here to sort of um, blend that really harsh line together, probably some up across here. And again, I'm going to overlap 
So, um, you know, it's not just stenciling in this tiny little piece, it's going to extend through. Where did I find my paint bottle holder? I got it from Bev's Crosscraft in Tassie and Sprayton. She, if you're in Australia, she um, delivers. Uh, she, she's online. Um, it's an art bin paint. Uh, it's an art bin ink storage or paint storage one. I know art bin you can sort of get here, there, and everywhere. So if you check up art bin, um, you'll find it. So you can sort of see now by just putting that little bit over here. When you stencil, it's a really good idea um, to touch the edges. So it's not just floating in midair. So you always extend from the edges. And I just keep going. Like that's really, really pale down there, but just until I use all the paint on my sponge. And usually I stop stenciling when I've used up my little pile of paint. So um, <laughs> again, put as much or as little on as you want. Now, obviously, if you wanted to, um, you don't just have to stencil in white. You could stencil in some of the other colours. If I decided that, you know, I didn't have enough green on this page, I got rid of too much of my green in the background, I could put a little bit, of, stencil a little bit of green on here. It really doesn't matter what colour you're doing. It's just adding extra texture and extra detail onto your page. Um, and it really doesn't matter what type of stencil you use either. So I'm just using a dotty one because it's simple and lots of companies do ones like this, but use whatever you've got. Okay. Cool the old. So once you've finished that, you're just going to heat it again. And for those of you following along at home, we're going to break out our neons next. you've got if you want to grab them so we're going to be breaking into these next Oops. so like neon paint um, is by its nature very translucent um, just um, the way the pigment goes so it's you can see through it really really easy and the way I like to describe it is it's like putting a filter on your page and um, you can see through all the layers beforehand and what it does is just boost the color that's fine Cressida it's no <laughs> you you know what you're doing so it's all good so um, you just need a tiny little bit I get carried away with pink, so I really love the pink. And I like to use my fingers. Um, if you want to use a brush, use a brush, but I just like using my fingers. And just rub it in across the page, and you will just suddenly get this boost. And you can see why having the white on the page can be really important, because again, that just picks up and echoes. It's just magic. particularly this colour. Yeah, neons are amazing. So I do tend to kind of put, no, the Mark Mark ones are really good too. So, um, like, neon, neon is neon. So it's, the quality, you know, doesn't vary all that much. Um, I just find, particularly with this pink, that it's kind of amazing. So, um, 
however many colors you want to put on, you can put on. I am going to put on some of the green. I do have the orange here. I'm not sure if I'll use that, but we'll, we'll see. Oops. So I do tend to put the, the neon sort of near or over the colours that they, you know, the greens over the greens or something. But I just thought you want to break up. There's a lot of orange in this page, which I'm not really an orange person. So I put some of the green up there. It doesn't really go over it, but it does sort of boost the colour. And in the long run, I know I'm going to be doing more stuff over the top of this. Yeah, it makes a huge difference, doesn't it? So you just go from, it was really nice. I like it, don't get me wrong, I liked it before, but adding the neons just, just boosts. And it's um, really deceptive because people wonder why or how the colors changed. Yeah. So I would never, ever, ever have said in the past I was a neon person, but my goodness, they just make such a huge difference to a page. And if I had to just choose one, I'd go for that Reflex. It's, that's the Amsterdam. It's called Reflex Rose because it's just phenomenal, just that colour. And again, I'm not really a pink person either. Um, the Montmartre set has them in blue. Um, the Amsterdam doesn't. Blue just by its nature doesn't really go as neon as some of the other colors it just doesn't have the same vibrancy or lightness to it I don't know why probably the pigments too heavy or something okie dokie so this will seem a bit backwards but we've um, put our neons over the top and we're going to put some white back in again now the reason I did the white first was because I wanted to have those light spots for the neons to really um, grab onto and have that really light um, things in the background um, but I do want to bring some pure white back on again <laughs> yeah that's the reason why I don't do nails I, I do see everyone on you know lots of people on YouTube with beautiful nails and I just know there's no absolutely no point in me having it because between having small kids and doing this and teaching there's not much point <laughs> I do appreciate looking at them though okay so I'm gonna use a different stencil you could use the same dot stencil over the top if you wanted to and again this is just you know it's not necessary it's just adding in a little bit more white if you want to do some more of scraped white layers over the top, you could. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, Laurie. No, I'm not really those people, those color people. I certainly wouldn't wear them, but. I do like a good rainbow, so I guess I'm a rainbow person. Okay, so I'm kind of going in where I'm stenciling. Again, I'm not really thinking about it, but there's not much happening up here. There's not much happening up down here. So I'm going to put it in here. So if anyone's got any questions as we go along, please ask. I am trying to follow, keep up with the chat. 
So you can move your stencil around so you only do parts of it as well. You don't always have to use the entire stencil. And it doesn't always have to be, you know, totally opaque. Yeah, this stencil's beautiful. Um, it's a diet, um, it's one of the newest um, Dina Wakely ones. It's called Flourish. It wouldn't have been one I would have picked up off the shelf. It was sent to me and, oh my goodness, I just use it so constantly. Um, I just really like the flow of it and it kind of just, you can use bits of it and you can move it around so it fits where you want it to fit, which is really lovely. So I like that. So I can sort of have it sweeping across the page. Get your hands on it, Diet. I would highly recommend it. <laughs> it's very good. Um, I think I'll just leave it like that. Okay. So we've got lots of colour on this. We have got lots of white on this. We need some black on this page now. Um, just to balance it up a little bit. So this is where you can either um, get some oh, stamps or stencils. Um, I'm actually going to go for some El Cheapo options. Um, using one of my favourite stamps ever. Yep. There's no rules to follow in art, Laurie. Even in card making, you can do whatever you want. Um, yeah, so <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's why I love this. And I suppose my philosophy with art journaling, I no matter whatever videos you see of me do, I never really go into any of them with a preconceived idea. Um, the joy of making art for me is a problem solving of it. So you know, looking at this page. I know what I need to do to this page, um, but, you know, for me looking at it, I would be going, right, I like it, but there's something missing. And for me, what's missing is black. So, okay, well, let's put some black on. And I might put too much black on and think, oh, okay, well, now I need to add some white to balance it up. So that's that's why I like the, the bit being no rules. So, um, yeah. But as I said before, if you're a card maker... Make some backgrounds like this. Cut it up for backgrounds and cards. Use it for your die cuts. It'd be awesome. Hi, everybody. Oops. So, just getting my El Cheapo stamp. Now, obviously, you can buy <laughs> stamps that look like bubble wrap, but you could just, you know, use bubble wrap. It's coming up to that time of year. Every time I say that, I think of um, the Olaf song. Can you tell what age my kids are? <laughs> So I'm just sort of going in, pressing it down, not being too worried about how it looks. Just seeing where there's gaps and popping it in. Um, I've got some mic making stamps too. These are just some smaller finer dots and again like I could put lots of different colored inks on this too but I've kind of got a lot of color in the background so just balancing it up with some white and black helps and I'm just stamping off the ink on my on my stamp so again <laughs> as a card maker <laughs> Laurie you're probably going oh that's not how you stamp but you know, I don't want the whole stamp on there. I just want little bits and pieces. Brilliant. Okay, so that has what we have got for the moment. Now, again, I can add um, 
paint pan to the background. I could add all sorts to the background here, but I am actually just going to leave this as is for the moment um, and have a little bit of a think about it. So, this is where we're going to, okay? Which you think, oh, we started off with something really, really bright and now we've just dulled it all down. But when you actually do this um, for yourself and have a look at it, up close you will still see all those layers coming through so that's one thing we need to sort of learn about particularly in art journaling is we can do these amazing amazing backgrounds um, but by the time we finish you may not see much of the background so part of the journey is actually just doing this and having fun doing it and as Patty just said take a photo you know, take a photo of the stages. If you love this, take a photo of it. You can put it in your computer and print it out as many times as you want and use it as backgrounds, use it in your card making, use it in your scrapbooking, all sorts. So um, don't be afraid to do that. I do that quite a lot with some of my backgrounds is actually take a photo of it and use it in different ways. Can you use a normal black ink stamp pad? Um, do you mean a dye ink pad, Pamela? It would probably be best if you can use a permanent ink pad. Um, you could use a dye ink pad, but we are going to be gluing some stuff on top of this. We're going to be adding some paint pen. We're going to be adding some more paint over the top. So if you've got something that's dye based, it will probably smear and smudge. So you're best to use um, a, um, an archival or a permanent ink pad or um, a heat set ink. So sometimes you can get a... Um, pigment ink that if you heat set it it's permanent um, if you don't have if you've only got dye based ink um, you might heat emboss it either with clear embossing powder or if you've got black you could do it with black embossing powder um, yeah so just be just be aware that we will be doing more layers over the top of this so if you've got water soluble stuff it is going to smear okay we're going to put this out of the way for the moment and we're going to go on to making our little figures. So, bye bye background. Need to grab out some cardboard or paper, whatever you want to work on. You could tear out a page out of the back of your journal if you want. And all I'm going to do is cut three strips uh, about an inch wide, maybe. That's my little sample piece. Oh, no. How big did I make those? I made them as big as raw. I don't tend to measure, so I usually actually do like ruler me ruler widths. Um, oh, excuse me, my stomach's talking to me. Oh, my stomach really is talking. Excuse me. So we're going to use three strips. Now you could do as many or as few figures as you wanted to. You could do one really big figure, quite wide like this. I'm just going to do three little figures, um, each to your own, how you choose to do it. So um, whatever you choose to do. Oh, I'm going to grab my journal back for a second. Oh no! I cut out my weird and wonky creatures. I didn't mean to do that. I'll just have to draw them again. I'm just going to take a quick picture of them though so I can remember what they look like. There you go. Goodness. Um, about Oh, how big is this? It's about an inch and a half, but it really doesn't matter how big or small they are. And it can scratch it a little bit, but not noticeably. I don't um, mind if my mat gets scratched, so it doesn't really bother me. If you want to use a normal cutting mat, that's fine. But it it's not an issue. The only thing I find, obviously, with them um, working on glass is it just blunts down your um, blade a little bit more. 
how about for your Dina Wakely face stamps? I don't quite understand the question. Power. If you can tell me the brand of the tell me the brand of the ink pad and I'll be able to tell you a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to cut my figures at different heights. So I'm going to make this one about this high. So I'm going to make this one about this high. I can't believe I did that. How silly. Just three different heights. You can see <laughs> that I really don't mind what length they are. So you can, I, I do like them being slightly different heights. Um, I have actually not cut those very straight, but that's okay too. Each their own. Okay, so for this bit we are going to, it's so, so difficult. <laughs> the most difficult bit about this is actually choosing the colours you want to use. Um, we are going to paint some stripes onto these um, pieces of paper, pieces of journal, um, cardboard. Um, I've chosen kind of Christmassy colours with red, green and blue. You could go metallic, you could have them all the same colour, you can have them all different colours. It really doesn't matter. Um, so go with what you like. I know some people, you know, colour theme their Christmas trees. So you might want to use that theme that you've used for your Christmas tree this year if you've got a Christmas tree up. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, we're going to dull down the background of the um, page that we're working on. So whatever we've got in front will stand out. Yeah, what's the brand of the ink that you use? Does it have a name on the top? So is, it, is it a distress or is it a versifying or yes it would be a great one for your lace cut page i'm so excited you did your first lace cut page Woohoo! that's so exciting okay so i'm just going to put out a little bit of paint and i'm going to use my um this is a half inch flat brush again it doesn't really matter No, it shouldn't ruin the stamps, no. Um, I just use it because <laughs> I can paint out stripes with it without having to think too much. So, um, so this is a paper artsy paint. If you haven't used this paint before, it's fantastic. Um, it's super, super matte. So... Dina Wakeley's paint um, is a matte acrylic paint, but it's it's still a little bit gloss. Um, it's still got a little bit of sheen to it. This paint is fantastic if you like to do pencil work over the top, colour pencil work and so on, because it's got a lot of tooth to it. It's actually called a chalk fresco paint. So... Um, it's fun to use. You were scared to death. <laughs> Why were you scared to death? Goodness me. I'm sure you did an amazing job. Um, if none of you, or if, I know some of you are, but um, I do have my own Facebook kind of group called Mixed Media Creative Queens. Um, so if you would like to share what you do today, or if you do anything based on you know, any of the videos you see, I would love to see what you guys are doing. So the, the only thing that um, I kind of get disappointed with when I'm sort of doing online classes, my, my wonderful students are really good at, at sharing what they do. Um, but it's, it's not quite the same as actually seeing what people do in real life and for you guys to see what people do um, in real life as well because that's where you get your inspiration from. And I'm sure Cressida... Um, you know, from our last class, it was amazing. Like we all had the same instruction, we we're all doing the same thing, and just the the different stuff that came out was just amazing. So, where can you get paper artsy? One site, and they're always sold out. Um, I would suggest 
Patty, if you actually go to um, um, the Paper Artsy site itself, they have a list of retailers of where they're sold worldwide. So they, they would be the best people to contact. Um, it, it depends where you are. If you are in, well, Patty, I'm pretty sure you're in America, so you're not in Australia, but um, Australians, um, Bev's Crosscraft um, sells a whole range of paper artsy paints. And I know there's a lot of other retailers, I think the Crafty Cupboard and so on um, in Melbourne sell them too. So they are available, they are around. But if you're wanting to know who sells near you or where's the best person, the closest person to you, go to the Paper Artsy site and they've got their retailers worldwide. They're, they're quite pedantic about who sells for them, um, particularly their stamp sales because, you know, they're very, rightly so, worried about um, copyright issues um, from companies copying their, their stamps. So, um they're, they're on the ball and they know where their stamps are being sold and they actively promote their retailers. So, so go and check those out. So, oh, Carmen, you're still st scared to death of doing this or doing paper cuts. So you can just go over and do as many coats of this as you want. But to be honest, we're going to put a little bit of pencil work over the top of this. Um, if you don't want to use colour pencil on it, you may want to make it a little bit... Um, a little bit more opaque. But it really, it really doesn't matter. Now, one thing I did forget when I was doing this, which... Um, if I was a professional painter, just going to go and close my door here because I think my family have come back and my little girls might come and visit. I love them dearly. They love being in here and painting with me and um, there'll be fingers everywhere. So um, we're the reason we're going to do some pencil work over this is to give these pieces of paper a little bit of shape. So if we want them to be rounded, I probably should actually be painting a little bit of a curve as I paint. So I Red one will look different, slightly different from the others, but that's okay. If you've done what I've done here, you haven't ruined it because that's pretty much how I paint it anyway. And we can kind of fix it up in a minute. So I'm just painting just a slight, slight curve on this. reminds me of the cat in the hat this one <laughs> actually all three colors are very dr seussish your paper should be fine um you may want to um glue it down onto your page if you're going to do some pencil work on it just so it's got a bit more strength but we're not going to be doing any huge amount of um work on it so just do what you do and as i always say there's no mistakes in art the other thing that's really cool and you'll see this in the next little bit i do um if you wanted to do something like this too you can use like vintage text underneath these a newspaper or something like that and a little bit of that peeps through onto the next page or on under the paint so you sort of get this interesting background i'm just going to chuck some paint into my um junk journal 
because I've got some left over and I hate wasting paint. Oops. So, um, we were talking about classes beforehand. This is actually the, the junk journal I made in our junk journal class. So, if you're interested in making a junk journal, um, you can order that class. They're all available now, they're all pre-done, so as soon as you go and order them, with sorry, not as soon as, within about 48 hours, because I have to be sent the paperwork to sign you up. Um, you can make your own junk journal too. All right, okie dokie. I'm just gonna dry these off. They're all pretty much dry anyway. For those people who were wondering what colours I use, so I had turquoise, slimed and cherry red. I don't know how I feel about the, um, the colours, well, I like the colour slimed, I don't know how I feel about the name slimed. Right, so we've got two more jobs to do. Just going to glue junk journals are lots of fun. Yeah, oh Patty, you missed out on that one. This, this is what we made. This is uh, the junk journal. So we've got two signatures in it. We talked about the papers, put it together, bound it all. You get some challenges to do. It was lots of fun. Starting to have a landslide around. <laughs> um, we've been going about an hour, Jamie. So we've done the background. Uh, we've mostly done the background. We've just got a little bit more to do to it. But to be honest, if you've got a background in your um, journal to begin with, um, what we're going to do over the top of it would still work. So you don't have to do the background I've done. Um, it'll work the same. So I'm just um, putting some text onto some cardboard. Oops. So this is going to be for our faces of our figures. Um, again, you could... You don't need to do this. I just wanted a little bit more um, interest underneath my face. So that's the only reason I did it. Um, again, if you've got some... I've done this with Dotty. Um, Dotty's scrapbooking paper. I can't actually think at the moment. <laughs> didn't glue down very well, Neve. Requires sewing. Um, <laughs> it requires some stitching. However, I am not a sewer and I can do it. So if I can do it, you can do it. Um, my mum got the sewing jeans in my family. I got the paper crafting jeans. So, um, yeah, it's really, really simple, Karen. Um, I'm, you know, hopefully someone else who's done the class can tell you it's simple as well because if honestly if I can do it anyone can do it uh, to be honest gel medium is not brilliant to do this job so if you just got normal glue it will probably do it just as well as gel medium or a glue stick basically all I'm doing is just gluing this paper down here so I can paint over the top of it so there's no it does not need to be curved or neat or anything it was a fun class, so yes, if you want, um, as I said at the very beginning of this, if you have a look back on my other videos, um, you will find the links to my online classes that you can go and purchase through Bev's Crosscraft. Um, or if you're watching this as a replay, I will add the link to the class onto the replay as well. <laughs> Thanks, my hand. Yeah, honestly, it really is. It's, it's simple. 
So I've, I'm just doing this to make the faces of my little people. Um, I probably only actually need two pieces, but I just did an extra piece just in case. Oops, and I've got the paint everywhere because it's naive. So this one is called Vintage Lace, and it's just a really pale pink color. Now, obviously, use whatever skin tone you want um, and whatever you are happy with using. Um, I've just got this, so... We are going to do some more shading over the top so you can start off with something lighter and make it slightly darker. If you're a darker skin tone, um, you know hopefully what works for your skin tone, what skin colours you like to use and what shadows work for that. Um, if you're not 100% sure, I am not the expert of it. Um, but I know Dina Wakely on her, when she was doing all those free demos um, at the start of the year, um, she does have one. So if you go to The Art of Dina Wakely on Facebook um, and look under the videos tab, she's got all the videos she did during lockdowns and so on. And she's got one, um, I think, which is called Matching Skin Tones or Creating Skin Tones, which is awesome and she covers all skin tones and how to sort of create them so um i know the jane davenport i think she's got face base or something like that that you can mix different skin tones too so right the last thing we're going to do which seems a little bit redundant but it just helps finish it off a little bit this is the white snowflake and again this one is really really opaque um, and I like using it when I'm using the other paper artsy paints um, because it's got the same finish yeah so power um, pigment ink if you heat set it um, and don't scrub or move it too much should be okay um, to put on your page but not all pigment inks are they're, they're not permanent necessarily some some are but some aren't and I'm pretty sure the universal craft ones isn't isn't permanent but if it is dry on your page it's going to be a lot more permanent than a dye ink is going to be if that makes sense so yep use it and heat set it so just make sure it's really really dry so I'm just going to go in with my white paint and I'm actually going to cheat slightly <laughs> and because I didn't do those curvy bits when I was doing my green paint I'm actually going to add them in with my white paint you are still going to see some of the um, green underneath but by the time we sort of fix it all up it really doesn't matter too much and again you know you don't have to do this bit I just like it makes it look a little bit more finished so if you're like me and forgot to do the curves which you probably did because I didn't tell you about it until we were halfway through it you can add them in in this step it's also if you've got wonky lines it's just a good way to sort of fix anything up that you need to fix up As I always say in my classes, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. So again, depending on how particular you want to be, you can do a few coats, but it's me. I don't. <laughs> how are you all going? So I usually stop and... Um, see how you're going but hopefully you're all keeping up it's, it's all fairly simple -ish stuff can't believe 90 people are here wow thank you all so much for coming and hanging out and remember if you've got any questions please 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 ask about keeping up so 
again, I'm doing three figures. You can do as many figures as you want. Um, I do like to have odd numbers of figures and my stylists do. Odd, odd numbers tend to look a little bit better than just an even amount of um, figures. But you could just do one larger figure. I forgot to say that at the beginning too. I tend to do a lot of double spreads, but you know, if you just want to do a single spread and have one figure on it, that would look fine too. There is absolutely no right or wrong. It's your artwork, what you say goes, and it's very unlikely the person looking at your artwork has probably seen mine, so. You can make it look any way you want. That's what I love about class. I teach the classes and I go around and learn so much from you guys because I see awesome colour combinations I wouldn't have thought of or um, you've just done it in a slightly different way. It's like, oh, can I borrow that idea? Okay, Lauren. Um, things like this, if you like, if you've joined later, you could. This is pretty simple. I've just painted stripes of colour onto a piece of cardboard, so um, you could be doing this bit if you wanted to, and then go back and watch the background afterwards if you want. Save you a bit of time tomorrow. So I haven't done anything special with this. I've just cut three one and a half inch strips, and I've just painted on some stripes. Um, if you can paint a little bit of a curve into them so you don't have to go back and fix it up like I'm doing right now that's a good idea but again you don't have to do it so where it's you know a little bit too much blue going you can go down and add extra paint to it um, just to make it opaque but it really really doesn't matter. Totally up to you what you choose to do. <laughs> oh no, maybe. No, it's, it can be We Three Kings, it can be a bunch of angels, it can be anything you want it to be. So my other page was three angels that I had. Um, I've done this before as three kings. It could be whoever. So. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> I should have said, yes. Good old Tazzy being ahead of everyone else for a change. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Okay. You've got red and pink stripes. <laughs> that's okay. Um, red and pink stripes would be cool. I actually had this sitting in the back of one of my books and I was actually, it's something I cut out from one of my previous pages and I thought um, that would be really cool to cut up. So it doesn't have to be red and white, you know. It could be candy canes, but you could do something in another colour and have black on it. Um you could have metallic stripes so go for your red and pink and see how it looks it might look amazing and we might all want to do red and pink stripes okay so while that is drying I'm just going to cut out some really simple head shapes Oops. so I'm just cutting out U shapes because you know why wouldn't you? And they've all got flat heads, because again. Why not? Depending on how particular you want to be, um, I do have the uh, the writing all going the same direction, but you don't have to. You can you can have it upside down. Oh, thanks, Patty. <laughs> Okay, so I've got one, two, three heads. Awesome.
There's one thing I have learnt from um, running classes um, is always particularly tell the Americans that Australia is in the future because quite often I have people turning up and well, not quite often because you they're pretty good at working it out um, or they have got used to it now um, but I didn't want people turning up a day afterwards and wondering why they weren't there for the live so um, yeah it is, it is frustrating when we're on one day and you're on another day sometimes so what I'm going to do now is just really simply just cut the cur cut a curve at the top for the shoulders Oh, Diane's stylized collage skirts. Oh, can't wait to see that. That'd be awesome. Oops. I'm still really annoyed at myself for going up that, that picture underneath. <laughs> the list is going, it's going into something else. Okay, so I've got my three figures. I've got my three heads. All done. So, <clears throat> what's the time? We, I'm, look, I might only do one of these right now with the shading. Um, and you can do this at, at another stage afterwards, just so we can get the, the background done. Um, but it's, ex it's exactly the same shading on all of them. So I'm going to do my blue. And again, you do not have to do this step. This is just an added extra. So I'm using some Prismacolor pencils um, just because that's what I've got. But basically you need a dark, a medium and a light colour. Okay, And the reason I used the Paper Artsy paints was because I knew I wanted to do some shading over the top. Now if you were using the Dina Wakeley paint, you might like to do a little bit of shading with the Scribble Sticks for example. Um, these kind of work over the top, but sometimes they chip off the paint a little bit because they're a little bit glossy. Um, it's 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 totally up to you. This is a, an added extra step. So the fresco paints are awesome. I held off for so long not getting them because um, there's 180 of them. I do not have the whole set, by the way, but um, yeah. Once I discovered that I actually, because I never actually used colour pens as much. I used them at school and that was about it until I realised um, that the colour pencils you use at school are crap. And when you actually use real colour pencils, they're actually quite cool to use. So what I'm going in is, you could do this one section at a time. I'm just doing this quickly. So I'm going in along the outside with my darkest colour. Then I'm going to go in with my second colour and I'm going to go over the top of my darkest colour and blend out and that sort of softens the edge a little bit. Oops. And again I'm not being very particular or careful about this, you know, it's just to get a, a bit of extra. Something or other oomph on the page. I'm also not 100% concerned if I go onto the white because I'm going to add some black to it as well. So you could certainly do this one section at a time and do it really, really well. Or you can cheat and do the speedy version like me. Um, you don't have to have all your figures finished well if you want to finish the class with me um you can get them all finished but you've got time to do this I, I don't want to rush you too much so if you want to take your time and do it that's fine okay so i'm going back in with my lightest color now and i'm actually going to color over the entire piece and I'm going to take, I don't know, it's probably a bit hard to see, but what happens is, 
because these pencils are so soft, it actually does blur them out a little bit and blend them together. So I'm using my lightest colour basically as a blending pencil to blend my three colours together. Because I've got my base coat there, it um, adds that extra colour and just brings everything together. So if I was doing this properly, instead of going horizontally like that, I should have actually, when I was doing my shading, again sort of had that curved line to it which I'll do on the next one I'll do it properly for you but it still works so night lovely ladies look after yourself thank you so much for coming to hang out it's been lovely having you here and yes you can see you can see the finished page and you I would love to see your finished pages when you're done too so I've sort of got that curved thing happening now on my sheet and it's pretty simple <laughs> that's a long time to be up Jamie <laughs> okay so again with my green um, I've got my light medium and dark and I'm going to do exactly the same thing again so I uh, do it properly, Neve. So I'm sort of going to go out on my edge in kind of a curvy fashion. It really doesn't matter though if you can't 100% get it. It's just giving that dark edge gives the figures a bit of body to it. Don't feel you have to get all three done. Um, if you've got one done, that will be fine. You can always do the others a bit later on when you've got a little bit more time. And again, not all of you may want to do this or may not have pencils to do this. It's not necessary. This is just an extra -y bit if you want to do it. Yeah, I start with the dark and work inwards. So I start with the dark and work towards the light. So now I'm putting on my medium and I'm overlapping where my dark is. And I'm sort of drawing it in from the edge and you should sort of see it. Depending on what colour pencils you are, um, the Prismacolor pencils are quite soft so they blend really nicely together. If you have got the old school version colour pencils, you may find that it doesn't blend and it's a bit liney. And um, you might find using, you know, crayons or something like that might work better. If you've only got crayons, it's the same technique. Um, or if you've got chalk pastels, you know, start from dark, go to light. Um, and you could, you could do it with paint as well if you wanted to. You could even, if you wanted to, experiment, um, go over with watercolour paint would work especially over these paints so once you've done your med medium color morning Eleanor how are you oops you color with a broken pencil apparently sorry I don't like waste so I'm just gonna use a broken pencil so again I'm going in from both sides and bringing the two sides together and I'm blending them together So I suppose this is kind of like the sort of neons. You've got the base colour underneath. This is just blending everything together and making it sort of send out. So it's a bit hard to see on screen. I'll laser up a little bit. I don't know if you can, it's a bit more helpful probably. You sort of see that bending happening. <laughs> um, I get up late. <laughs> well, I get up sort of around um, seven, seven-ish. 
when I'm working and my husband's nice to me maybe about eight when I'm not working and um, I usually go to bed my, my husband and I have a running joke so I'll go to bed early tonight and we're usually in bed by half eleven so <laughs> um, yeah it's just how it goes sometimes now these three pencils are tricky because the lighter one is actually darker The lighter one's actually the darker one. It actually runs like that, which is a bit bizarre to me, but that's how it works. So I'm going back to my cheats way of doing this just to do it quickly. Again, starting with my dark. And you can see that, you know, the, the tones of the colour I've got. Um, there's really no right or wrong to what colour you use. You just want it to be toned into what you're doing. Once I've got my dark on there, I'm going to go in with my lighter colour. Oops. And again, I'm sort of going to blend the darker colour out. She's only on time, which is good. I'll keep you here too long. Middle of your Saturdays. Does anyone else have any other questions as we're going along? Are you busy creating? Once I've got my medium colour on, now I'm going to go in with my lighter colour and blend them together. Again, with my lightest colour, I am sort of going in that curvy, curvy line way. Just to make sure it sort of all goes together. Night, Patty. Look after yourself and we will see you around. Oh, Santa Picks. Looking forward to seeing them. <laughs> okay, so now we've got our um, shading on. I'm going to go in with my Stibula All Pencil. Um, if you don't have one of these, just a black pencil will do. But as you're probably are aware, if you do follow my channel, I love this pencil. I love the fact that I can, um, it's very, very soft. It's very, very black and I can water activate it to get some different shades as well. I'm not actually going to water activate it on this one. I'm just using it as a, a sort of really deep black. And I'm just going around the edge and I'm using a kind of sketchy line um, you know short sharp strokes of my pencil so to get that real darkness on the edge and I'm also oops going to go round with my um, pencil around each of my stripes it off. So if you do have a pencil sharpener on hand it is handy for this because it does because it is such a soft pencil it does go blunt fairly quickly. So just like we did on our background you know black is really really important because that pulls everything together it gives you it suddenly sort of gives you a bit of a focus of where you're supposed to be looking it makes things make sense but you need to use it wisely um, because too much can just be too strong on a page and sometimes 
um, if you feel that you need to use a black on a page, if you use a really dark neutral that's not quite black, you will actually find it works really, really well. Um, office works. Um, Patty, uh, not Patty, sorry, um, Pamela. Um, but you need to order them on, well, it might be different in South Australia, but in Tasmania, I have to order them online. They usually come from Sydney. But they're probably actually the cheapest place to get them. You can get them from art shops, but they're usually like four or five, and I've sometimes seen them for $8 a pencil. And from Office Works, you can get them for about $1.52. But it is quite hilarious how they send them because I ordered, because I was using them for a class, I need the class set. I ordered a class set of 24. I got a set of 12 um, in a huge box with just a rubber band around them. Then I got two sent in a huge box without a rubber band around them, no padding in the box at all. It was just the pencils. So they were just rolling around, getting blunter and blunter and blunter in the box. And yeah, the rest of them were sent singly in huge boxes. So um, someone in office works is either having a joke or wanting to use someone's postage because that was just ridiculous. <laughs> um, it is, but it doesn't really matter because it adds to the shading. We're actually going to go back onto the white. I do have a, a dark neutral. This is a warm grey, so I'm um, using a warm grey. If you don't have it, um, you can very, very carefully use some of the um, Stabilo All Pencil. I'm actually sort of going to draw some of the Stabilo All Pencil on here. And I'm just using this again to put a little bit of shading onto the edge of the, the white. I'm sort of drawing in a little bit of that black in. I'm not going in too far. Um, if you had a huge amount of greys in your collection, if you had a pencil set and had lots of greys, you could kind of do the same thing if you wanted to um, and go a light, medium and dark. But just having a little bit of grey on the edge just helps give that a bit of rounding, a bit of body to it. Um, the pencil I used for the outlining was called a Stabilo All Pencil. So it's, um, it's a water-soluble black pencil. Um, if you have the Derwent Intense, it's, it's kind of like those. It's a little bit softer and waxier. Um, I know the Intense, when you um, activate them, does actually become permanent. The Stabilo doesn't, when it's water-activated, oh, sorry, it will continue to be water-activated. But it's, um, it's just, it's, I don't know if waxy is the right word for it. It's soft. Um, it spreads really easily. It's just a lovely pencil to use. It makes me feel like an accomplished artist when I use it because when I water activate it, you just sort of give natural shadows where it, they, they should go without you having to think very much about it, which I love. So it's made me feel a little bit more confident in my drawing, which is a really funny thing to say about a pencil, I suppose, but there you go. Yeah, and again, like I said, you could just leave it as is, but if you want to make it look finished, you can do this too. So again, on screen, because you're a little bit far away, but I will hold them up so you can sort of see them closer, and when I finish, I will post a picture of the the finished piece so you can see it. 
It's also a good way, like I was saying before about, you know, where I'd sort of overpainted, you know, with the white over some of those colours, you can kind of use this to, to colour over that so you can it blend it into the background a little bit more so it disappears. Now usually, I suppose this is a little bit different from what I usually do, like I don't usually tend to spend that much time doing something like that, but it's, you know, it makes it look worthwhile. So it's quite, it really is kind of looking cat in the hattie at the moment. There's something about that red. So just having that shading on the, you can see it's not perfect, it's pretty messy. So, um, but it just makes a bit of a difference. So all we're going to do to our faces is pretty much the same. Um, yeah, I've got... So I'm just going to go around the edge really, really quickly. So I've got a darker colour. Again, you know, shade, shading and contouring, I have come to learn, because I am still learning about it, is basically all about darks, mediums and lights. <laughs> it's just learning about those three. Um, and knowing particularly your shadow colours. So, um, obviously I'm using um, a Caucasian skin tone type colouring here. Um, if you're a darker skin tone, um, you would be more aware than I am of what shadow colours work well for you. Um, I don't know if you follow James Luke Burke Creative. He does an awful lot of illustrations. He's great at sort of like almost fashion illustrations. Um, and he has talked about on his channel before about different skin tones. Um, and I think for darker skin tones, he's sort of talked about using um, maroon colours or burgundy colours and yellows as a highlight. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that's correct. So, um, but, or you can always do what I do on my channel quite regularly is just forget about normal skin tones and just go for rainbow because, you know, everything looks better in rainbow. James is amazing, isn't he? Um, yes, it will be available in replay. So as soon as we're finished here, um, hopefully if it does all the right things, it will save immediately to the channel um, and it will be there for anyone who can access my channel to, to have a look at. Okay, so last but not least, because we've done the black on our bodies, we are going to put a little bit of black around the edge. Again, because it is a face, we don't want it to be really black. And you may want to only put it on one side. I'm just going to do it on one side for the moment. I might change my mind when I stick it down on the page. Just think it might need something else. But for the moment, I'm just going to put it on one side. Okay. Awesome. So the final thing we're going to do is we are going to paint a crown or crowns because um, if you've got cardboard, use cardboard. Um, I just can't find the rest of my cardboard, so I'm going to use some music notes that I've got here. Um, we've got flat heads and I don't want to do hair. So I find that if I'm cutting out abstract figures like this, quite often I'll either put some flowers on their head or crowns on their heads because it's just, I can cut out crowns really easily <laughs> and I don't have to worry about hair. So I've got some really gold gold paint, which is actually iridescent bronze, which is always, I always find hilarious. But it's really, really gold. Um, and as you can see, it's also really, really opaque. So I can't see the music notes underneath. That's fine because I'm just using this as a piece of paper. So I'm just going to paint this out. 
Now, if you wanted to, there is a whole host of things that you could do to do this. If you didn't have gold paint, um, you could do gold embossing on a piece, like cut out a crown shape and do gold embossing. Or, as it is Christmas time, <laughs> sometimes I, I, I do love being um, a school teacher anyway but at the end of the year you sometimes get teacher gifts and one of my lovely little students yesterday gave me a box of Ferrero Rocher so um you know I could quite easily sacrifice um I have to eat the inside just to get the paper to make my crowns so use use what you have got around your house to help you out you may not have those around your house but you know whatever you have got to make something gold and again who says a crown needs to be gold so use use what you have just cleaning up. Oh, Polly. <laughs> That's okay. It will be recorded so you can see it. <coughs> Excuse me. Just have a drink. Okay, so I'm going to move my uh, figures out of the way. I'm just putting them on top of my paints. So when I ask where I put them, you know I put them on top of my paints. <laughs> um well Polly um you can't I don't think you can start it I'm not sure if you can or not can you go back and start at the beginning of the live while the live's still going I'm not 100% sure but you can do this bit so basically all we cut out is um three pieces of cardboard they're one half inches thick and just a variety of sides whatever will fit into your journal and basically all I did was paint um, stripes in three different colors and then I painted white stripes so just like blue and white red and white green and white you can choose whatever colors it could be metallics so you could have metallic and black if you wanted to so uh, whatever color combination you want just in stripes we did go over the top of them and do some shading um, but even if you just get that bit and the painting done, um, the class should be finished so you can go back and watch how we shade it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, isn't it? So, yes, it's always hilarious, you know, because obviously teacher follows some teaching accounts and you, you see sort of in July all the, the teachers in August getting ready to do their um, start of year and setting up their classrooms it's like oh, I'm glad I'm not having to do that now <laughs> okay so back to our journal and this is not a finished background but what I'm going to do now is just sort of plan out where I want to stick stuff um, and the reason I'm doing that is I kind of need to know where I want to shade around so um, I don't know. I'm going to switch it up because usually I have have everything happening on this side of the page, so I might have it like that. I might have my three people. <laughs> like that. But I just thought I'm going to have a star over here and really I should actually have my shading on the other side, but who cares? So you can put them on whatever way you want to put on. And again, if you really like what you've got just like that, just do that, okay? You don't have to do what I'm doing next. So I know that I'm going to have most of my figures on here. I'm going to have a space over here. So I know I'm going to darken around my edges. And I probably need to curve it around here, but I really don't need to worry about this side too much. Okay, so I am also going to put a star on this page because I like stars, I like star shapes. Um, so I'm going to cut a star, but I can't actually find my star that I cut last time. So I, I know Pamela's asked about this before on the channel and other people might have the same question. What I've cut out here is a stencil, but I don't actually want a stencil, I want a mask. Okay, if I do a stencil, a stencil through this, I'm going to have a dark star on my page. 
that might be what you want to do so that's fine but what I actually want to do is I want to trap my bright colored inside and darken the outside so I need the mask but I'm actually just going to go over here because that's how I was going to do it I don't actually this is where the stencil comes in really handy because I can put it over here and go I actually don't really like that but I actually really like that I like the colors I like the pink and the green in here so I think I'm going to switch around my um, design and I'm going to put my star over here again because you know why do something um, different from how you've done it before so um, draw a star <laughs> you can see I sketched that out before and it was too big um, I'm going to try and sketch it out again And again, you don't have to use a star. You can use whatever shape you want. Oops. The good thing about sketching it out beforehand is you can go back in and you can change angles to wherever you want them to be. Oops. Very big star. I'm going to go within and within that. Thing. I actually really like that shape star there. But oh, just squashed something. So you can use scissors to cut this out. I prefer using a knife just because. Oops, because I can do that. <laughs> And you probably do want to use a sharp knife when you're cutting and not have paint on the end of it like I do here. That's not ideal, but bunching up like that. Draw a longer tail down here. Now you may have a star stencil um, that you love, use that. Um, you do need the mask of it, but what you could do is, oops, cut that out. Obviously, if that was a commercial stencil, I could put that down on a piece of paper and draw around it and cut that out and use it as a mask. So, um, you know that's a great way to use your your commercial stencils if you don't have the mask of it well just draw around it and cut it out and you have got the mask so it gives you a little bit of flexibility with what you're using i'm just going to bring my page back again so yeah right i quite like that there so I'm, I can kind of, again, use my stencil to work out where I want it on the page. So I quite like it there. So I'm going to pop my stencil right there. Okay, so how are we going? I forgot to check in with you. Sorry, I got carried away and talking. Forgot that I was running a class. I know some people are... Not, you could do, um, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, sponge the paint on. And the reason for that is we don't want it very dark. So we don't want to paint out the entire background. Um, see you, Sammy. Thank you so much for hanging around. And hopefully you can catch the end of it um, soon. And I can't wait to see what you come up with. Um, so, Laurie... You, you could trace around and cut it out and paint over it, but we're going to sponge over it because we want it to be a little bit softer. When We don't want to get rid of all the background. We still want to see it through, if that makes sense. So um, if you are painting with a paintbrush, you may want to um, water your um, paint down a little bit so it's not 
quite as thick and dark. And that's where, um, oh, awesome. I didn't even think of dies because I don't have die cuts. So um, yeah, a die cut would be fantastic. Um, this is why I really like this Payne's Grey um, from Amsterdam's Paint. And down the bottom, I don't know if you can see on, on the screen, it's got these little, and a lot of professional paints do this. It tells you what the colour is, but it also has some symbols here. So this symbol here tells you that it's not quite, it's not opaque. It's got some translucence to it so you can see through it. Um, and it tells you about its light fastness and so on. So if you go onto the website, it will explain those symbols. But, um, you know, if I used, for example, a black gesso, like this one, this is very, very opaque. This is going to obliterate what I've got in the background, which in some cases I might want that, but in this case I don't. We've done all this background. We want to see some of it peeking through. So if I only had black gesso, what I would do is I would... Um, water it down a little bit um, with sponging that gets a little bit tricky because you don't want it to be um, too watery so you do need to sort of play around with that a little bit to get the right balance so yeah see what you've got so I've got my makeup sponge for those people who haven't um, sponged before I put it into the paint but you can see here I'm actually working the paint into my sponge so there's nothing sitting on the surface um and you know i'm not going to have a big blob of black because i don't want that so around my mask i am going to make it slightly darker because i want a real contrast between my background and where the star is so i'm going to make it quite dark but I don't know if you can see on screen, and sorry, it does get a little bit bumpy when I'm doing this. You know, up close, I can still see, and you can actually see it on screen, I can still see, even though that's grey, I can still see that white popping through. Okay, so I don't want just that on my page. I need to blend it into the background. And I haven't cut my sponge very well, so I'm getting quite a harsh line. So just play around with what you have got to work with. So I'm starting off with the edges because I do want my edges to be dark. They're going to be the darkest bits. A bit like when we were doing our shading on the page, you know, that's where we're going to have the dark bits. And I'm going to keep going down my page. So I'm going to start from the darkest, but then I'm going to work in, again, a bit like when we were doing our shading on our um, figures. You know, I don't have very much paint left on my sponge, but there's enough to still sort of blend it out. So I want to blend it out until there's basically no paint left. And if I want to, I can use my fingers a little bit as well. Oops. So same with the top. The darkest at the top. And then just keep going over and over and over. So you don't have many much paint left and it sort of all blends in. Now obviously around the star, um, you, want, you don't want those really harsh edges. So you do want to sort of get rid of those lines to make it make sense. So down here, I'm sort of going to blend that out and around. Now I'm going to have figures on this page as well. I'm going to have some text. So if you have some harsh lines, you know, that you can't, you're really struggling to blend out, well, that's where you stick your figure. <laughs> that makes sense? Okay, so now you can sort of see what we're sort of trying to achieve. Keep your mask, don't throw it away by the way, because um, we will need it in a second. Okay, so again, darkest at the top, along the edge, and then we're going to blend it out. So I'm not putting more paint on just yet, I'm going back, getting rid of those edges. 
and hopefully if you're doing this with me you can sort of see up close you can still see those layers underneath so you know I know a lot of people when they sort of first come into mixed media one of their biggest complaints or people who don't really understand it sort of go you know you spend all this time making a background now you're just putting paint over the top what is the point why are you doing that well the point is that I can still see it I know those layers are there each of those layers has made a difference to the background they've been done for a reason and even if they haven't been, I've spent two hours playing with paint and I've had fun. And hopefully you have too. I am going to go the full way around the page. I am going to leave this part. I'm not going to put much, um, if any, grey in here at all. Because that's where I'm going to have my figures. Because um, So I'll have some brightness behind them. If you want to keep going with it, you can. But it's sort of giving that sort of circular effect. Um, has it been yet? You know, the, the old photos where they have the, the darker edges and it gets in lighter. I'm just going in because I've got extra paint here. Just using it up. Which is always a good reason not to put too much paint out because I then do this and then I end up with too much paint on my page. <laughs> okay. They've got this beautiful bright start. You've got some brightness over here and you've got that darker edge that gives you the impression of sort of a night sky. We're still having a crazy background. Hawkey dokey. Right, we are going to now get our mask back and pop it back on again. Now, <laughs> for those people who've been a bit worried that today has been messy, it's about to get messier, so I do apologise, but it's going to be fun. Oops. Where's my gold? Now, if you don't... Oh, starting landslide. You could do... But you might find it's a bit too opaque. Um, the the grey in itself is a little bit translucent, so that's why it's kind of working. Um, so yes, certainly you could mix some white into black paint, but you would need to be make sure you're applying really thin layers. You don't want it to be really really opaque, Kathy, if that makes sense. So just be careful with how much you're putting on um, to, to make sure that you can actually sort of see, see a little bit of the background, if that makes, if that makes sense. So I've just got some white um, acrylic ink. Yeah, maybe add a little bit of water to it. Um, just again, if you are adding water to it, um, it might become too runny when you're trying to sponge with it. What you could add to it, if you've got it, is um, gel medium. So what the gel medium does is it, um, it acts kind of like the water. It suspends, it suspends the paint particles in the gel medium and sort of stretches them apart from each other. So it makes it a little bit more translucent without losing the consistency of the paint. Uh, if that makes sense. So uh, you can actually buy... Dina calls it glazing medium, but basically what it is is uh, a thinner version of a gel medium. Yep, clear painting medium. Um, so yeah, gel medium or clear painting medium, mix it in and that will extend it to make it a little bit um, more opaque. Um, not more opaque, more more translucent. Get your, get your words right, me. Okay. So my iPad's about to get covered. I do apologise if you have got technology around you. Um, you might want to put a piece of paper up in front of it just for this bit. Um, if you've got a box that you do splatter in, um, you might find that useful right now as well. So we're going to put some splatter on. Um, splatter... 
scares some people but what it actually does is again it's that unifying elephant elephant element <laughs> goodness me and um, it brings everything together it's just like that stenciling we did in that stamping going over all those areas to blend it together organically and naturally um, you can't control where it goes really so um, you can just let nature do its trick um, I've used acrylic white acrylic paint white acrylic ink and a gold acrylic ink if you've got the Dina Wakeley gloss sprays you could use those it's pretty much the same thing um, if you don't have inks you can do this with watered down paint <laughs> I'm definitely going to do a page about unifying elephants this, uh, this evening I think I think that's awesome okay so basically um, everyone's got their own personal splatter technique I like to use a fan brush um, the older and crappier the fan brush I have found is the better but you get big splats and you get little fine splats which makes it really good sort of for galaxy backgrounds so you want big blobs and you want little really little fine blobs and you want to do it over the whole thing and my iPad has just gone white <laughs> so you may not want to do it around your technology but really important though that you do have your mask in place to do this I can hear my kidlets coming home. Okay, so again, put on as much as you want or as little as you want. Um, acrylic ink does tend to dry quite quickly, but again, you've got it in blobs, so it takes a little bit longer than, you know, you might need to put your heat gun on it. I'm just, sorry, I'm just going to wipe my iPad. Oops, I've gotten rid of you. Sorry, hang on. Oh, you're back again. Hi. <laughs> right, okay. So I'm going to do the same with the gold because I, I like having that gold um, combination. And again, you could use any combination of colours on this. So you don't have to just use what I find white is really... It really sort of stands out and is quite stunning um, and and so is a metallic but to be honest you could use any colors it's a great way to bring in some of the colors from the background again so if you had a really fluorescent pink ink for example that could look really cool um, but if you've if you've you know don't have any and you've only got white choose white or if you only want to use one color choose white I'm just causing a landslide so we, we are nearly done guys I know it seems like we've been here for hours but we are nearly done I hope you've been enjoying yourself <laughs> I'm just gonna clean you again sorry oops now I've done something funny right okay just gonna go in and quickly dry this because Knowing me, I'll put my hands in a big pile of paint. Ah, there we are. I hope no one's having a freak out about splatter. Oh good, thanks Diane. I'm glad you're having fun. And again, like we're sort of doing a um, a Christmassy type go but you know this could be used for any any background you've got you could just do this you could do a whole heap of little stars or you could do or any sort of mask in the background and just have a beautiful quote across your page so um, don't feel just because this is sort of got a Christmassy theme to it that it has to be Christmassy yeah you love splattering awesome there are some people that you sort of say splatter and you can just see them turn inside out and go no. <laughs> okay so we're sort of up to the finishing off part now which is good so I'm just going to put my figures on 
Where's my tallest one? I think my green was the tallest one, wasn't it? So depending on how you want it, you might want them in order from tallest to shortest. You might actually do that. Or you might want them three different heights. This kind of works better now just in the fact that because of where I put the shading on my page, um, you would have light coming from the star realistically. So I've got the shading on the other side. <laughs> oh, Jamie, that sounds, so, that sounds serious. Okay, so whatever glue you want to use to glue it down, I'm just using um, the art. This is Art Glitter Glue, but in a Connect Glue container because I ran out of Connect Glue and I filled it up because I really like these little pens. They're just really, really handy. But and any glue you've got that will glue it down, you just want something that will glue down card pretty well to your page. I'm glad you're learning lots. So if you are a visitor to this, you've come from one of the many places that I advertise this on, um, I would love it. If, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, um, oops, I've just put gold over that, but that's okay, um, to like and subscribe my YouTube channel. I um, post twice a week on my YouTube channel on Tuesdays and on Thursday, Tuesdays and Friday, sorry, I should know the days I post. And... Um, Quite often, because you know it's me and I finish journals regularly, I'll you know pop it if I've got lots of videos standing in standby, I, I put some extra videos up as well. Um, sometimes, um, if I'm sort of sent product or something like that, I might do a whole month of extra videos, so I just do, but. You're guaranteed to have two videos a week at least, so which is good. And I've already got content posted up until February for next year, so that's not going to stop anytime soon. What am I using? Um, it is actually this glue. It's art glitter, um, art glitter glue. It dries clear. It's not actually necessarily for glitter. It's just like a PVA glue, but it just dries really, really quick. So once I put it down, it it's just really tacky straight away. I've just got it in a Connect Glue um, container. Um, but if you're in America, um, the Connect Glue from Gina K Designs is what I used to use. It's pretty much the same stuff. So I've, I've just liked having it in this little container -y thing. Okay, so I'm going to cut my crowns. Knowing how big the heads are is always handy. You can make your crowns as big or as small as you want. Oh, lovely, Jamie. That's nice to know I'm eating lunch this summer. <laughs> it's 8 o'clock in the morning here, so I'm doing breakfast. Can I fit on him? Kind of. Doesn't matter. Give him itty bitty crown. Oh, that's beautiful. So you can see why I like crowns because they're quick and easy and they cover flat heads and you don't have to worry about hair. Cool. Oh, I'm glad you kept up. Sorry, I know I did sort of promise two hours, so I don't want to overstay my welcome. I'm just going to cut this bit off because that little bit where I forgot to paint really, really buggy me. Oops. Just plop that into some wet paint. Now obviously if you wanted to put features on the faces you could but I just quite like 
the simplicity of not having the faces on there. Um, apart from the fact that I usually get frustrated with myself when I'm trying to draw faces, particularly on something like this, because they never quite look whimsical enough or they're not looking in the right direction. So I just like the fact that you can get away with actually not drawing anything on them. Um, but, it, you know, if you want to, if you're good at that, um, you could um, not use these blank little faces. There's lots and lots of... Um, face stamps that you could stamp onto something and use as well. So um, use use what you've got. I'm just going to go around my crowns because I do have black to outline everything else and sort of push it out from the edge. So I am going to do the same with my crowns. And again, just short little lines. Oops. Yep, you could do. So you could certainly do that, Pamela. Is it the willow? You know those little sculptures you get? The Is it willow tree sculptures that have the blank faces? I really like those. So um, that's what these kind of remind me of. Um, I just like things that, you know, you can, you can kind of put in the emotion your, your brain can kind of read it depending on how you're feeling on the day. So I kind of quite like that. I am actually going to go back um, and just put a little bit of black on these just to push them out from the background a little bit. They were just looking a little bit wonky. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now I've got my background. Just going to finish off. So... As I said at the very beginning and when we were doing the backgrounds, backgrounds, you can have as many colours as you want, but you need to balance them with white and black. Um, and adding black outlines and adding white black out, white outlines to things just sort of really finish them off. So I'm going to use a thin white paint pen. You've got a um, gel pen you can use. Um, if you didn't have ink to splatter with but you've got a paint pen, you can splatter with a paint pen by the way. So if you want to splatter with a paint pen, just prime it up and then just shake it over the page and you will get splatter. So um, don't feel that you have to go out and buy ink because if you've got a paint pen or you've got white paint watered down, you've got, you've got stuff to splatter. I'm just going to be careful as I'm doing this because I've got a wet patch of paint down here. <laughs> Okay, um, so I'm going to outline my start. I'm going to do really scratchy, scritchy lines, lots of double lines, just to make it look, sort of stand out. So short, sharp. And up to you whether you choose to do it on the inside of the star or the outside of the star. I'm sort of doing it on both. It's obviously going to stand out more on the outside of the star, but it is really up to you where you choose to do it. So, um, and as I've said before, I'm sure there's a scientific reason for it, but scribbly lines. Okay, see you, Pauline. Bye. <laughs> um, scribbly lines tend to work better. If I tried to do that really neatly with one straight line, I am bound to sort of go wonky at some stage and it's going to immediately stand out. If I'm wonky the whole way around it, it actually looks like a design element. So you trick the eye and make people think, oh yeah, it's supposed to be like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add more stars to this page. I know I've got the little splats in the background, but to kind of make them look like stars or like a galaxy, I'm going to add some more in. And I'm just going to try my pen and just make, just vary the size, big and small. So you've got these little pinpoints of light and I'm going to do it all over. Little ones, big ones. You can use dots that are already on your page kind of to use as focal points. You're going to blend them down in here. So this still looks like it's part of the background.
So you want to have big and little. You want to have the random sizes. You want to have them close to the figures. You want to have them far away from the figures. And again, there's no right or wrong to how many you do, where you put them, just wherever you feel like it. Now you could go in with a gold pen too if you wanted to. I just like having a white, it's personal to me. But So sort of step back, have a bit of a look at it, see what you think. Okay, and again, I know it's a little bit hard to see on the screen, but when I take a close-up shot of this for you, um, you do see them. They blend into the background, but when you look at it, it just gives you that extra layer, and it, it's it's all about those layers. So we've got, you know, we had the white where you put the, the neons over, we've got the white stenciling on it, now we've got some white on top as well, and with that splatter. So it's just about building up those layers about what you're doing. So, oh, I know what I forgot to put in. Go on, Dill. <laughs> I am such a Dill. Okay, transparency. So I did actually want to put some wings on these guys. So these are from a company called, um, from a company called, what are they called? I don't know what they're called. Scrap FX. Um, so I'm going to put these wings on. What I was going to do though was put some text behind it. So which wings do I like? I like those ones. Now again, you don't have to do this. Um, and if you've got the Tim Holtz little um, butterfly wings, you can use those. This doesn't have to make sense. You can have wings with things, even if you don't want, you know, they're not supposed to have wings. There's no supposed to in art journaling. So they can be, can be, be, be as weird and as wacky as you want. I'm going to put a small pair on him. What can I fit in over here? I can fit those ones in too. So you get a lot of talking to yourself while I'm doing this. It's quite funny. Kind of gives you a glimpse into how I actually create these videos for you guys anyway. Um, if you don't realise how it sort of works, this is what I do. This is where I sit um, at, and work in my art journal or in my studio. And um, quite often I have something playing on the iPad in the background. And I talk to myself as I'm doing it, usually just calling myself an idiot for doing something silly, like what I've just done. Um, but yeah, I then strip that out and do my voiceovers for you guys. <laughs> Someone was quite funny, I can't remember <clears throat> if it was on Instagram or Facebook. He sort of said, oh, you do so well not to swear. It's like, how do you know I don't swear? You don't actually hear what I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to do this on one pair of wings just to see if I like it because I don't know if I want to have, um, goodness me, wait until everything's dry. Don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> I've got ink on the back and I've just spread it on here, but it's okay. I can deal with that. Um, if you do like having something different in your background um, with transparencies, you can use um, gel medium to glue your transparencies down onto another surface. So I used to struggle with um, using transparencies a lot until I, I discovered I could do this. The other thing that I find really, really useful is I actually put some gel medium over the top. And the reason for that is just to take away the shine because 
um, sometimes I don't want the shine. Sometimes I do and I don't have an issue with it, but sometimes I don't want the shine. Um, I would suggest if you are doing this at home, don't do what I'm about to do, but I'm just going to give this a quick blast of the heat gun. Some transparencies will put up with heat, some won't. Um, you don't want to find out the hard way when it starts to curl. This one is actually working okay with heat, so. Um, if you can leave it to dry naturally, it is better. So once I've got my transparency glued down, I'm just going to fussy cut out around my wings. Now because I have, if, if I just left this as a normal transparency, um, I, I wouldn't have to necessarily fussy cut up as closely as I am doing at the moment. Um, again, if you follow my channel, you know I've got a bit of a, I, I like things being nice and close. I don't like having halos around things, but, you know, if it doesn't bother you, well, don't let it bother you. So I don't... Does anyone have any questions? Because we're nearly at the end here of anything that I haven't. Um, no, these wings, which I have just lost the other pair of. Where did the little ones go? Oh, they'll turn up somewhere. <laughs> um, They're from a an Australian company called Scrap FX. Um, lots of companies do wings. Tim Holtz has wings in his line too. Um, you could draw your own if you wanted them. It's just up to how you choose to do it. Now this goes to show you how good this glue is in the background because it's glued down rather well. Obviously if you're doing wings, don't do it at the last minute like I'm doing. Actually do them as you go along. So I actually quite like that. I was just trying that out to see if I like the text on it, but I actually quite like the text on it. It also makes them a little bit more visible on the page because the page is quite busy. By having that little bit of text on it, it actually draws um, the idea that it does actually have wings on them. Uh, there, there are wings on my people. The other good thing that I can do is... Um, by having the text on it, I can actually overlap them and um, overlay them. So I like the fact that I've got the text. Sometimes you just have to try these things out to see if you like them to begin with. It's all trial and error. Um, don't feel that you have to do, you know... I can stick this on here and then decide I don't like it. That's okay. You know, you don't have to stick it on. I've just lost my other wings, so I'm just going to see if these tiny little ones fit in. I'm going to try and be smart. It's probably going to bite me, but... I'm going to try something. Am I currently selling any art? No. Um, I just do this for fun, for me. I do sell online classes. So um, once this live is finished, I will put the, just the um, link to my online art classes so you can create your own art. If you like what you see, you can create your own stuff. Um, but I don't sell it because I don't have time. Um, it would be lovely if I did. But I think I think selling art is tricky. And um, you have to be very good and very prolific to do it. And possibly not have little kids and a full-time job. Okay, so again, you don't have to put the gel medium over the top. I just do because I'm not a huge fan of the um, glare. And as I said, 
try this on a pair that you don't particularly want to see either leave it to dry naturally which I would highly suggest or try it on a scrap bit that you've cut off the edge to see if the um, transparency curls because some do, some do. goodness sorry guys two hours stretch into two and a half hours Oops. hopefully you don't mind too much though You're good at drawing wings definitely and um, the other thing that you can do if you don't have transparency wings there are stencils with um, wings on them I'll show you an example of that in a minute so you could stencil your wings on or draw around your stencil as well it doesn't have to be on a transparency um, that's just the wings I had so you can also like if you had wing stickers or you know the other thing that you could do is, um, like if you had, you know, National Geographics of a bird in flight, you can cut off the wings of that and collage them in. So, but as I said, you don't have to have wings at all. 